All right. Are we properly warmed up? Yeah! I'm gonna ask you guys one more time. Voodoo play outside. Are you guys ready? Yeah! That's what I like to hear. This is this guy's first time ever doing stand up. He is one of my favorite people in the world, and I don't say that uh, just to bring somebody up. I really love this dude. He's uh, an inspiration to me and just an awesome dude. Now you get to experience him. Give it up for uh, Jeff. <laughs> I was gonna say Big Brother's Home, but then I was like, let me just say Jeff Schroeder, and then I said, uh, so it makes it seem like I don't know. But I do, and he's my homie, and he's here for you right now. Give it up for, uh, Jeff Schroeder, everybody! Oh my god! Yeah. My man! Love you, boy. Thank you, buddy. Oh. Woo! What an intro. That was terrifying, and my best friend doesn't even know my name. I love that. I love that, guys. My name is Jeff. Thank you so much for taking the time. Let me do my thing here. It's one of my fear factors, uh, I could say, but. You know, I'm 40 years old, I'm married now, I have two kids, it's crazy to say that you're 40. You know, a lot of things change when you're five, 40 years old. You look at the world through a different lens. You know, you're not that old guy that could just get away with anything, you know, so you're not that guy yet, but you're not that 20 year old smart mouth kid that could get away with anything and the last thing you wanna be is that 40 year old smarting off to that 20 year old and getting your ass kicked in front of your wife and kids. You don't want that, you know what I mean? But uh, the most thing, the, the best thing I love in my life is my family. I love my family. I have a two and a half year old boy. I have a five month old uh, child, a uh, little boy. And you know, that's the best thing I love. And I love traveling. And the worst thing in my life is that I tra have to travel with them. That's the worst thing that I, that I have to do. So recently I just went back to Chicago. I'm gonna get right into it for the holidays. Nobody from Chicago here? Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> I'm loving this so far. So I went back home for the holidays and uh, I went to the airport and it's the worst going to the airport with children. Does anybody have children? Okay, jeez, Louise. All right, but let me tell you, it's the worst going to the airport with children. You gotta pack all these bags, you gotta check all this stuff. It's the worst, trust me, it's the worst. And let me tell you something else. When your child turns two, you have to pay full price airfare for that seat. So I paid $450 for a 25 pound carry-on, which I wish I could've got one of those fake letters from one of those fake doctors and charged him as an emotional support kid and just put him like <laughs> under my seat, I could've saved 450 bucks right there, you know? So let me tell you, I, I wanna apologize on behalf of all parents, you know, all around, everybody hates a crying baby on a plane, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody hates that. But let me tell you something, you guys get in the way too. Without children, you guys get in the way too. Let me tell you why. We're holding, I'm holding my five month old, I'm getting in line, right? And all of a sudden they call group two. So I step up and I'm like, oh, this is my group. And I'm standing in front of this person right here and they got their little neck pillow ready to go. And uh, I'm standing there and they call group three. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Are you, excuse me, what group are you in? I'm in group seven. You're in group seven? Get the f out of the way. Why are you two inches behind the, the, you know, going into group two and three? It drives me crazy. Nobody? All right, that's me. I just get crazy with that. It drives me crazy and everyone's looking at us because my kid's crying. The only thing I wanna do is get on an airplane, you know what I mean? Just like everybody else and get to where I'm going. So when you're going down that little hallway, you know what I mean? And I got a giraffe toy hanging from my neck and then, Cheerios trail from the Jamba Juice I was just at. You know exactly where I'm going. There's that guy, obstacle number two. I'm in row 13, you know what I mean? And he's in row 12 trying to put his bag up, but he overpacked his bag. You know this guy, right? He's putting his bag up, stuffing it all kinds of different ways, trying to put it up in the air. And you're like, dude, you know your bag doesn't fit from the beginning. Why didn't you just check that thing. You already know what's going on, but everyone, again, is looking at me and my wife because we have the crying baby. All I want to do is get in that seat. We finally get in our seat. I got my five-month-old child with this much room in front of me, and then the guy in front of me, you know what he does? Puts his seat back pre-flight, right? We all know that guy. Thanks for the awe, because we all hate that guy. We all hate that guy. I don't even know why seats go back on a plane. It's the worst, especially when you have two kids crying and doing whatever, and then someone behind you puts their little toes between the seats. You know that one? That one, so it's tough for us as parents. And then you think, listen, all I want to do is figure out a way to assassinate that person who put their seat back in front of me the whole flight for three hours. That was a little harsh, I know, but that's what I think. So listen, the flight's over, we land, all I wanna do is get off this plane, just like everybody else, right? So the plane lands and then what happens? 
Why isn't the door opening? Is the door opening? What's going on with the people in front of us? Why aren't they moving? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Finally, they get out of the way, right? You calm down. <sighs> let's get off this plane. But no, there's that one person. I'm in row 13. They're in row 14, right? 11, 12, my time to get off. I get all the toys, get all the kids, get everyone gathered. And that person thinks that they could step past row 13 without us going first. Who is that person? Who is that person? Who, one of you in there is that person. One of you is in that person. You're the person at the gate. You're the person with the bag. You're the person behind me. Check yourself, because you know what I'm talking about. That's when it's nice to have a kid, because you could kind of throw an elbow in their face and say, listen, I'm getting off first. And just when you think it's all over, finally walking off that plane. Oh, f I got to do this again in three more days. <laughs> That's it, guys. Thank you so much for letting my face my fears. I appreciate it. Thanks for the laughs. Thank you, thank you. Give up for direction. Was that all right? Dude, it's tough, dude. It was tough. <laughs> that was tough. I'm so proud of you. Holy sh I told you, did it. That was tough, dude. You know what you learn is. This one's not a win now. Wow. All right, Jeff, we gotta talk. I need to Mark, how you feel. Mark Summers. Right Mark Summers is here. Okay, Jeff, you're the man of the hour. Tell us how you're feeling right now, dude. That was rough, dude. I'd rather jump out of an airplane again. I think when you look at it, you're going to be uh, pleasantly surprised, actually. Really? Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, I think so. Dude, that was rough. Like, it's tough, it's tough to, like, feel that crowd's vibe and then not get it. And then you got to keep going with your material. But see, you, you know what I mean? get it. And then you realize next time you slow down a little more. You're a little more conversational. Each time you get up, it gets easier and easier. Dude, but I'm surprised. That, that was good. really good for the first, first time. time. Yeah. My first time was horrendous. So, like, <laughs> You were normal oh, yourself. Shit. You knocked out all the problems. Like, all you have to do is be yourself. You already got the hard part. Most people are trying to be funny. You just, Jeff, that's how you talk. And, like, I mean, if you think about all the greats, when you hear them on stage, they talk just how they talk on stage. It's almost like they're continuing the conversation and they just happen to be on stage in front of a microphone. So, you did it. I'm, bro, I can be. Yeah, man, I'm so proud of you. You know what I feel like? I feel like I'm playing football and I just ran on the sideline after I fumbled, and I'm like, Coach, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to fumble, man, but I, I, I'm going to get back in the no, game. Much better, Jeff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jeff, that was amazing. Yeah. Like, I mean, the fear that people have for doing stand-up, you went up there and you were yourself. You went up there, you executed your first, you, you executed your first joke. You executed your first joke. <laughs> Just like you wanted to. And you were yourself. You talked about the material you wanted to. You didn't get rattled. You didn't go over your time. You absolutely did the perfect thing, man. I'm so proud of you. That was one of the best like openings I've ever seen in my life. No way, dude. No way. I swear. Do you have no idea? It's so crazy up there. It's so hard. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's crazy.